Friday at Pizza Flicks. Tonight, it's a 1967 television production directed by Alex Siegel and introducing Diana Davila as Anne Frank. A teenage girl and her family are forced into hiding during World War II in Nazi-occupied Holland. This is her story. Stay up here. What's the use of torturing yourself like this? I've come to say goodbye, me, but I'm leaving here. I... You can't leave here, Mr. Franz. Amsterdam is your home. Your business is here waiting for you. Now that the war is over, there I are... I can't that... stay in Amsterdam, me. There are too many memories for me. I... Everywhere there's something. The house we lived in, the school, that street organ playing out there. I'm not the person you used to know me, Bum. I'm a bit old man. Forgive me. Come here. Mr. Frank, some of your papers are here. We found them in a heap of rubbish on the floor after you'd left. Burned them, all of them. Burn this. I must die, I. Monday, the 6th of July, 1942. 1942. Is it possible, me? It's only three years ago. I, I. 
Since you and I are going to be great friends, I will start by telling you about myself. My name is Anne Frank. I am 13 years old. I was born in Germany the 12th of June, 1929. As my family is Jewish, we emigrated to Holland when Hitler came to power. Yesterday, father told me we were going into hiding. Our hiding place was to be upstairs in the building where father used to have his business importing spice and herbs. Actually, things had gone well for us in Holland until 1940. Then the war came and the Dutch were defeated. With the arrival of the Germans, things got very bad for us Jews. They forced father out of his business. We had to wear yellow stars. But somehow we children still managed to have fun. At five o'clock this morning, mother woke me and told me to hurry and get dressed. It wasn't until we were on our way that I learned where we were going. Three other people were coming in with us. The Van Dan and their son, Peter. Father knew the Van Dan, but we never met them. Something has happened to them, I know it. No, Kelly. But Mr. Frank said he was going to be here at 7 o'clock. That's they what he said. They have two miles They've been to picked walk. up. Okay. You see, that's what's happened to them. They've been picked up. Shh, shh, shh. Now, you see? Huh? Oh, Mr. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Van Dyne. Mr. Van Dyne. Oh, there were, were too many. Oh, the green police in the streets. We had to take the long way around. Here we are. I'm sorry. There's still so much confusion. Oh, don't be so We've plenty of time to arrange every, everything ourselves. Here's my wife, Edith, and my daughter, Margot, Mrs. Van Damme, Mr. Van Damme. And Anne? Anne? Anne! And Peter Van Dyne. Hello, Peter. And now, let us all get settled. Yes, sir. Peter! Mrs. Frank, have you put your bread and milk in this cupboard here? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Your drugs are up there, as you see. Ah, Soap yeah. down here and linen in oh, here. Oh, Liebje. That's it. Oh, and one other thing. The stores of food you sent, we put in ah, here. Yeah. Forgive me, everyone. I have to run. I have to go to the other side of town to get your ration books. Please. Ration books? But if our names are on them... Oh, don't worry. Your names won't be on them. I'll be a plater. Thank you, Meep. But that's illegal. I mean, we've never done anything illegal before. Well, we won't be living exactly according to regulations up here, my dear. I must be out of here and downstairs in the office before the workmen get here. Yes. Now, uh, me or I, or both of us, will be up each day to bring you food and news and find out what your needs are. Mr. Crowler, how can we ever thank you? I never thought I'd live to see the day when a man like Mr. Frank would have to go into hiding. Uh, you'll tell them about the, the noise? Yes, I'll tell them. The noise? Well, one minute. the noise. Well, first, let us take off some of these oh. clothes. Oh, yes. It's so hot. Uh, it's a wonder we weren't picked up walking along the streets like this. <laughs> Petronella with a fur coat in July. <laughs> and that cat of Peter's crying all the way. A cat? And, and, and. It's all right. I've got on three more. Oh. <laughs> Well, now, about the noise. While the men are 
in the building below. We must have complete quiet. Every sound can be heard down there, not only in the workrooms, but in the offices too. The men arrive about 8.30 and leave at about 5.30. So, to be perfectly safe, from 8 in the morning until 6 in the evening, we must not move unless it is absolutely necessary, and then in stockinged feet. We must not speak above a whisper. We must not run any water. We cannot use the sink or even, um, forgive me, the WC. Uh, the pipes go down through the workrooms, it would be heard. And no trash. No trash must ever be thrown out, which might reveal that someone is living here. Not even a potato paring. We must burn everything in the stove at night. Well, yes, this is the way we must live until it is over. If we are to survive. Until it is over. Well, Mrs. Van Damme, you and your husband will be upstairs. Uh, Peter will be here near us. And this will be our common room. After six, we can move about, we can laugh and talk and have our supper and read and play games, just as we would at home. And uh, now, I think it would be wise if we all went to our rooms and were settled before it. Uh, we can never, never thank you, Mr. Frank. I don't know what would have happened to us if it hadn't been for you. Well, you don't know how your husband helped me when I came to this country. Knowing no one, not able to speak the language, I can never repay you for that. Uh, come along with you. You too must have some rest, Edith. You didn't close your eyes last night. Neither did you, Margot. I slept, Father. Wasn't that funny? I knew it was the last night in my own bed, yet I slept sound. I'm glad. Now you will be able to help me straighten things out here. So come with me. You and Margot rest in this room up here for the time being. Peter, I'm glad you're to be with us. Thank you, Mrs. Frog. Uh, Anna and Peter, I think it's best if you take off your shoes now, before you forget. What's your cat's name? Mushi. 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 I love cats. I have one, a darling little cat, but they made me leave her behind. What's yours, a him or a her? He's a Tom. He doesn't like strangers. Well, then, I guess I'll just have to stop being a stranger, won't I? Is he fixed? Huh? Did you have him fixed? No. Where did you go to school? Jewish secondary. But that's where Margaret and I go. I never saw you around. Well, I used to see you, sometimes. You did? What are you doing? I'm taking it off. But you can't do that. They'll arrest you if you go out without your star. So who's going out? Why, of course, you're right. But we don't need them anymore. I wonder what our friends will think when we don't show up today. I had a date with Yopi this afternoon to go and play ping pong at her house. Do you know Yopi Duvall? No. Yopi's my best friend. I wonder what she'll think when she telephones and there's no answer. Probably she'll go over to the house. I wonder what she'll think. We left everything as if we'd suddenly been called away. Breakfast dishes in the sink and beds not made. Look, it's still there. What are you going to do with yours? Burn it. It's funny, I can't throw it away. I don't know why. You can't throw something they branded you with? That they made you wear so they could spit on you? I know. But after all, it is the Star of David, isn't it? Are you hungry, Peter? No, thank you, Mr. Fong. Tonight we'll have a real supper. Our first supper together. Thank you. So, Peter, here is your room. And I warn you, you can't go anymore, not an inch, or you'll have to sleep with your feet out of the window. <laughs> That's a nice boy, Peter. 
He's awfully shy, isn't he? Well, you'll like him. I know. I certainly hope so, since he's the only boy I'm likely to see for months and months. Anna, there's a box down there. Will you open it? You know the way I'm going to think of it here? No. I'm going to think of it as a boarding house. Yes. A very peculiar summer boarding house, like the one that we... Father! Father! My movie stars! I was wondering where they were. And Queen Wilhelmina. How wonderful! Well, well there's, yeah. a, there's something more. Go on. Look further. A diary. Oh, father. Oh. Pencil, 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 pencil. No, Anna, no, no, no. I don't want you ever to go beyond that door. Never? Not even when everyone's gone? Never. I'm sorry, Anna, it isn't safe. No, you must never go beyond that door. I see. It will be hard, I know. But always remember this. There are no walls, there are no bolts, no locks that anyone can put on your mind. Come. Meep will bring us books. We'll read history, poetry, mythology. As a matter of fact, between us, Anna, being here will have certain advantages for you. Uh, for instance, do you remember the battle you had with your aunt, mother the other day on the subject of overshoes? Uh, do you remember? But in the end, you had to wear them. Well, now, you see, as long as we are here, you will never have to wear overshoes. Isn't that good? Mm. <laughs> and the coat you inherited from Margaret, you won't have to wear that. <laughs> and the piano. You won't have to practice on the piano. <laughs> oh, wow. I tell you, this will be a fine life for you. <laughs> I thought I'd better get some water from Mushi before. Of course. Peter. I should be describing what it feels like to go into hiding. But I really don't know myself. I only know it's funny never to be able to go outdoors, never to breathe fresh air, never to run and shout and jump. It's the silence in the night that frightens me most. Every time I hear a creak in the house or a step on the street outside, I'm sure they're coming for us. September 17th, 1942. The day is on so bad. At least we know that Meep and Mr. Crawler are down there below us in the office. Our protectors, we call them.
It's safe now. The last workman has left. I'm back with the WC. Six o'clock, school's over. Oh, Have you seen my shoes? Your shoes? You've taken them, haven't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're going to be sorry. Am I? Ah! Ah! <laughs> no, no, Peter! Don't! No, Peter! Ah! Peter! Well, now, Anna, dear. I don't think you ought to play with Peter like that. It just, it just isn't dignified. Who cares if it's dignified? I don't want to be dignified. You complain that I don't treat you like a grown-up, and when I do, you're unhappy too. I only want some fun, someone to laugh and clown with. But he isn't used to girls. Give him some time. Time? Isn't two months time? I could cry. Come on, Margaret, dance with me. Oh, Come on, I please. Can't. I have to help with supper. Not you know, we're going to forget how to dance when we get out of here. We won't remember anything. La la, la la, la da, la la, 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 la Peter! I'm giving Mushi his dinner. I'll feed him. I don't want you in here. You know what your father will tell you, don't you? All right. Well, give him his dinner and come right out, you hear? Now, is that a way to talk to your little girlfriend? Oh, Mom, I wish you'd stop saying uh, that. Look at him. Look at him blush. <laughs> it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, to have a little girlfriend. Oh, she's <laughs> only 13. Well, you're 16. It's perfect. Your father is 10 years older than I am. I'm warning you, Mr. Frank. <laughs> if this war goes on much longer, you and I are going to be related. <laughs> I wonder where Meep is. She's usually so prompt. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't stay. I have a friend waiting for me in there. My friend Tom. Tomcat. <laughs> Some people say that we look alike, but Tom has the most beautiful whiskers, and I have only a little fuzz. <laughs> I am hoping All one right, Mrs. day quack, quack. we grow. Peter! I heard about you, the way you talk so much in class. They called you Mrs. Quack Quack. You're the most intolerable, insufferable boy I ever met. Quack Quack Quack. quack. With all the boys in the world, if I had to get locked up with one like you. <laughs> Don't you ever come into my room again. Oh, give it to him, give it to him. You're hot. You're not running a temperature, are you? Oh, no, no. Let me see your tongue. Mother, this is perfectly absurd. Let me see your tongue. No. Otto. Well, you hear your mother, Anna. No, come on, come on. Open up. Open up. Well, it looks all right to me, but I think a couple of aspirins wouldn't oh, do any harm. They don't give a child any pills. I waited for 15 minutes for her to get out of the WC this morning. I was washing my hair. Quack, quack, quack. I think there's nothing the matter with our Anna that if I don't help Michael, a visit with your bit of all wouldn't be cured. Isn't that so, Anna? Hmm? What's for dinner? Beans. No, not again. We are now in what is known as the bean cycle. Beans. Beans boiled. Beans Anna. with string. Beans without Anna. string. Very good in Latin today. What about algebra? Well, I have to make a confession. Up until now, I've managed to stay ahead of you in algebra. Today, you caught up with me. But we'll leave it to Margot to correct. Isn't algebra a vile pin? Oh. Liar. How did I do, Father? Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. You Excellent. Have, we should have used the Excellent. subjunctive there. Yes. Well, I Miss Van Dyke, may I try on your coat? No, Anna. No. Oh, it's all right. Just be careful with it. My father gave it to me the year before he died. He always bought the best that money could buy. Mrs. Van Dyke. Did you have a lot of boyfriends before you were married? No, Anna, that's a personal question. It's not courteous to ask personal questions. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> Our house was always swarming with boys. Oh, God, not again. Shut up. 
<laughs> you know, one summer, we had a big house in Hilversum. Oh, the boys oh, came buzzing, buzzing around, around like, like bees, bees around a jam pot. <laughs> and when I was 16, we were wearing our skirts short in those days, and I had good-looking legs. <laughs> I still have good-looking legs. I mean, I have a very pretty face, but I've got my legs. How about it, Mr. Frank? All right, all right, we see them. But I wasn't asking you, I was asking Mr. Frank. <laughs> you know, my father used to worry about me with all those boys hanging around the place. If they get fresh, he would tell me. If they get fresh, just tell them, remember, Mr. So-and-so, I am a lady. Uh, remember, Mr. So-and-so, I am a lady. Just look at you, talking in front of her like that. Don't you know she puts it all down in that diary of hers? What sure, if she does? I'm only telling the truth. I uh, think Mip has the radio on. Haven't you finished? No. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. All right, all right. I'm a dunce. I'm a hopeless case. And why do I go on? You're not at all hopeless. Mr. Frank, maybe you could help Peter? Oh, I'm sure his father... Oh, not me. I can't do a thing with him. I don't... Well, what about it, Peter? Shall we make our school co-educational? Oh, you are an angel, Mr. Frank. An absolute angel. Mm. Why didn't I meet you before I met that one? Come on, sit down, Mr. Frank. Now, you listen to Mr. Frank, Peter. Uh, well, I think it might be better for us if we go into Peter's room. Now, you listen to Mr. Frank because Mr. Frank is a highly educated man. You know, I hear, I think I hear someone talking uh, down there. Isn't it bad enough in here without you sprawling all over the place? Oh, if you didn't smoke so much, you wouldn't be so bad-tempered. Am I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Meep only brought me one package. Well, it's a filthy the... habit anyway. Why it's don't you shut up? What are you staring at? I've never seen grown-ups quarrel before. I thought only children quarrel. This is not a quarrel. It, it's, a, it's a discussion. I've never seen children so rude before. I'm rude. Oh. Finish your milk. Come. <laughs> I must remember to tell me to bring me some more wool when I see it. Oh, yes, I need some hairpins and some soap. I'm going to make the list right away. Poor me, it's a wonder she has a life of her own where we make her run around all the time. Did you know she was engaged? His name is Dirk, and Meep's afraid the Nazis are going to ship him off to Germany to work in one of their war Don't you, don't you, don't you ever doing. stop no, no, talking, no. talk, talk, talk. Every evening it's the same. I've never known such a child. Talk, talk, talk. The trouble with you is you've been spoiled. What you need is a good old-fashioned spanking. Remember, <laughs> Mr. So-and-so, remember... I'm a lady. Let me give you a piece of advice, young lady. Men don't like that sort of thing in a girl. You know that? A man likes a girl who will listen to him once in a while, a nice domestic girl who will keep the house shining for him, who will cook, who will sew... I'd who, cut who, my throat first. I'd open my veins. I'm going to be remarkable. I'm going to go to Paris. I'm going to be a famous dancer or a singer or something wonderful. <gasps> oh! Look what you did! I'm the cause that my father came. I'm so sorry. Do you know what this coat costs? Do you know what it costs? Now look at it. Just look at I'm it. I'm very, very sorry, Mr. Oh, Van Damme. I could kill you. I could just kill you. Petronella, leave here. There, there's, there's no need to... to be... Now, Anna, you must not behave like that. Anyone can have an accident. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean the answering back. You must not answer back. They are our guests. We must always show them the greatest courtesy. Now watch Margaret. She's always courteous to them. Never familiar, and they respect her for it. Now try to be like Margaret. Margaret! Margaret, Margaret, Margaret! That's all I hear from everyone around here. How wonderful Margaret is. Why aren't you like Margaret? Anna, please don't be so... Everything she does is right, and everything I do is wrong. Stop. You're all against me, and you worst of all. <laughs> well, I don't know how we can go on living like this. I can't say a word to her and she flies at me. Oh, you know, Anna, in half an hour she'll be down here laughing and joking. And them. I told your father it would never work, but no, no, he had to ask them. Oh, every time the buzzer goes, my heart stops. Has everyone his list? Yes, 
Is it me? At last I'll have some cigarettes. Oh, Mr. Crowler. But if Mr. Crowler comes, the sunshine. Meep is coming. Uh, not tonight. Uh, Mr. Crowler has something to talk over with us. Something's happened, he says, which demands an immediate decision. What is it? Uh, usually when I come up here, uh, I try to bring you some bit of good news. But today something has happened. Uh, Dirk, Meeps Dirk, you know, came to me just now. He tells me that he has a Jewish friend, a, a dentist. He begged me, could I do anything for this man? Could I find him a hiding place? I know it's a terrible thing to ask of you, but would you take him in with you? Of course we will. It'd be just for a night or two until I find some other place. Where is he? Downstairs in the office. Bring him up. His name is Dussel. Jan Dussel. Dussel? I think I know him. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I spoke without consulting you. But I knew you would feel as I do. <laughs> this is your place. You are free to do exactly as you please. I... The only thing I feel is so little food as it is. We can stretch the food a little. It's just for a few days. You want to make a bet? Oh, I think it's fine having him. But uh, Otto, where are you going to put him? I'll come in here with you and Mother. Margaret can take Peter's room. And Peter can go into our room with Mr. Dussel. That's right, we can do no, that. No, Margaret, I, you must not sleep in that but room. Why? Neither you nor I know. Well, she has caught some rats in there. Well, Peter's brave, he doesn't mind. Then how about this? Huh? I'll come in here with you and Mother, and Mr. Dussel can have my bed. No, 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 no. No, Margaret will come in with us, and he can have her bed. Now, that's the only way out. So, Peter, come help me with a bed. Why, Margaret? Why can't I come in well, because here? it wouldn't be proper for Margaret to sleep with... Now, Why just, can't I... Anna, you just here? don't argue, Anna. You just don't argue, child. In it, where's the cognac? Oh, I was saving that in case of illness. Well, I think we can't find a better time to use it. So, Peter, bring five glasses for me, will you? Anna, you don't mind sharing your home with Mr. Dishman, do you? You don't. No, of course not. Okay. What is going on? Somebody's moving in with us. You're joking. Oh. Mr. Dis... Mr. Dissel, come in. This is Mr. Frank. Mr. Uh, Mr. Otto Frank? Yes, let me take your things here. Uh, Dirk's coat. Uh, yes. So, well, here's my wife, Edith. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Van Damme, yeah. and their son, Peter, Dussel. and my daughters as Margot and Anne. Yeah. Mr. Dussel, I leave you in good hands. How shall I ever thank you? Oh, please, please. We simply don't like the Nazis. We don't like anything about them. I know, I know. No one's going to tell us Dutchmen what to do with our damn Jews. Huh? <laughs> Pay no attention to Mr. Frank. Uh, Peter will bolt the door after me, won't you, Peter? <laughs> Come on, sit down. Sit down, sit down Mr. Dussel. Oh. I simply can't believe my eyes. Mr. Otto Frank here. A woman told me she... Uh, she said she went to your house. She found a piece of paper in the wastebasket uh, with a, an address scribbled on it. Uh, an address in Zurich. She said she thought you must have escaped to Zurich. It worked, Pim. The address you left, they think we're in Switzerland. I'm glad. I'm... And now, let us have a little drink to welcome Mr. Dussel. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dussel, welcome. We are very honored to have you with us. To Mr. Dussel, welcome. Hi. Hi. Oh, that was good. Uh, did, um, did Mr. Crowler tell you that you won't get very much to eat here? You can imagine. Three rations among the seven of us. Now you make eight. Uh, Mr. Van Dan, you can't realize what is happening outside that you should warn me of a thing like that. Why, right here in Amsterdam every day, hundreds of Jews disappear. They, they surround the blocks and search house by house. Children come home from school and find their parents gone. Hundreds are being deported. Uh, people that you and I know, the, the Hallensteins, the vessels. Oh, 
no. You, you get your call-up papers, and if you refuse, they come and drag you from your house and ship you off to Mauthausen, the death camp. Do, do you know the Devals? Do you know anything about them? Their daughter, Yopi, and I were in the same class. She's my best They friend. are gone. Gone? With all the others. Oh, no. Not Yopi. I think we should put this off until later. I'm sure Mr. Dussel would like to get settled before supper. I hope you won't be too uncomfortable. We've had to make very strict rules here, a schedule of ours. We'll tell you after supper. Anna. Anna, would you like to take Mr. Dussel to his room? Will you come with me, Mr. Dussel? Oh. Uh, forgive me if I haven't really expressed my gratitude to all of you. Mm -hmm. This whole thing has been such a shock to me. I always thought of myself as Dutch. I was born here in Holland, and my father was born in Holland, and my grandfather. And now, after all this time... <laughs> oh. Excuse me. The news sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? It's so different from what Mr. Crowler tells us. Mr. Crowler says things are improving. I like it better the way Crowler tells it. You're going to share the room with me. I, I am a man who has lived always alone. Have you no family at all? No, no one. Don't you even have a pet, a cat, or a dog? I have an allergy for fur-bearing animals. They give me asthma. Oh, dear. Peter has a cat. Here, here, he has it here. Yes, yes. Oh, but it's all right. We hardly ever see it. He keeps it in his room all the time. I'm sure it'll be all right. Let us hope so. Um, this, this is Margaret's bed where you're going to sleep, and I sleep over there. About this room, the way Margaret and I did it, she had it to herself in, in the afternoons for studying and reading and lessons, you know. And I took the mornings. Would that be all right with you? I'm not at my best in the mornings. You... you stay here in the morning, then. I'll take the room in the afternoon. Tell me, when you are in here, what is happening to me? Uh, how am I uh, spending my time uh, in there with all those people? Yes. I see. We have supper at a quarter to seven. Oh, then in that case, if you don't mind, uh, I like to lie down for ten minutes before eating. I, I find it helps the digestion. Of course. not going to be too much of a bother to you. I seem to be able to get everyone's back up. I get on very well with children. My patients all bring me their children because they know I get on well with them. So uh, don't you worry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dusso. Hi, Pip!
like that. She's endangering all our lives. Yes, he is safe, you see. Nothing's happened. No Mr. Dissel, please go back to bed. She'll be herself again in a moment or two, won't you, Arthur? Thank you, but I'm going to go and sit in the W.C., the one place where there's peace. <laughs> What is it? What is that? Ah, nightmare. She's having a nightmare. I thought someone was murdering her. Unfortunately, no. <gasps> Would you like a glass of water, darling? Hmm? <clears throat> was it a very bad dream? Perhaps if you told me... I'd rather not talk about it. Oh. <clears throat> Poor darling. Try and go back to sleep. I'll sit right here by your side until you fall asleep. You don't have to. Oh, but I'd like to. Very much. Really, I'd like to. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> Good night, then, darling. Would you please ask Father to come? wants you. Edith, dear. Oh, it's, it's all right. I thank God she, she'll at least turn to you when she's in need of comfort. Or go to her, Otto. She, she's still shaking with fright. Edith. Otto! <laughs> she wants nothing of me. She pulled away when I, when I went down to kiss her. Hey. Most girls go through it, you know. They turn to their fathers at this age. They give all their love to their fathers. You weren't like that. You didn't shut me out. Oh, Bim! 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 I dreamed it was the green police. And they broke down the door and grabbed me and started to drag me out the way they did you. I want you to take this pill here. Was I awful? Did I yell terribly loud? Do you think someone outside could have heard me? And Lie quietly down. I shall sleep now. I'm a terrible coward. I'm so disappointed in myself. I think I've conquered my fear. I think I'm really grown up. And then something happens and I run to you like a baby. I love you, Father. I don't love anyone but you. I've been thinking about it for a long time. You're the only one I love. It's fine to hear you tell me that you love me. But I'd be much happier if you said that you loved your mother as well. She needs your help so much, Anna. Your love. We have nothing in common. She doesn't understand me. Whenever I try to explain my views on life to her, she asks me if I'm constipated. You hurt her very much just now. She's crying. She's out there crying. I can't help. I only told her the truth. I didn't want to hear. <laughs> oh, Bill, I was horrible, wasn't I? And the worst of it is, I can stand up and look at myself doing it. And now it's cruel. And yet I can't stop doing it. <laughs> What's the matter with me? <laughs> Tell me, and don't say it's just a phase. Help me. There's so little. <laughs> that we parents can do to help our children. We can only try to set a good example, to point the way. The rest you must do yourself. Oh, I'm trying. 
I'm trying. Really, I am. Every night before I go to bed, I think back over all the things I did that day that were wrong. Like putting the wet mop in Mr. Dussel's bed. <laughs> and this thing now with Mother. I say to myself, I'm never going to do that again, never. Of course, I may do something worse, but at least I'll never do that again. <laughs> I have a nicer side, Father. A sweeter, nicer side. But I'm scared to show it. I'm afraid people are going to laugh at me if I'm serious. So the mean Anne comes to the outside, and the good Anne stays on the inside. And I keep trying to switch them around. And have a good Anne on the outside, and the bad Anne on the inside. And be what I'd like to be. If, um, if only the things, if only the things were Ato Adoshem Elokeno Mele Haolom Asher Kitsono Pumits Bosov Betibono Echadlik Nershel Hachanoko Amen. Praised be thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, that thou hast given us life and sustenance and brought us to this happy season. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was very moving. It's not over yet. There's lots more. There's songs and presents. Presents? <laughs> Unfortunately, not this year. But on Hanukkah, everybody gives everybody presents. Like our St. Nicholas Day. No! Oh, no not St. Nicholas. Wow. <laughs> what kind of a Jew are you who don't know Hanukkah? <laughs> the thing that I remember particularly are the candles. First, you light one like tonight. And on the second night, you light two and three on the third day, and so on, until you have eight candles. And when you have eight candles burning, it's truly beautiful. And the potato pancakes. Uh, oh, don't talk about them. <laughs> I made the best latkes that you ever tasted. <laughs> Invite us all next year to your own home. God willing. God willing. God willing. What I remember best is the presents we used to get when we were little. Eight days of presents. And every day, they. They got better and better. Well, we're all here alive. That's present enough. <laughs> no, it isn't. What? Yeah. Oh, I've got something. What is it? Oh, what? <laughs> present. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What does she have on her head? A lab shade. <laughs> this is for Margaret. Read it out loud. There. You've never lost your temper. You never will, I fear. You're so good. <laughs> but if you should, put all your crosswords here. <laughs> a new crossword puzzle book. Where did you ever get it? Oh, it isn't new. It's one you've done. But I rubbed it all out. And if you wait a little and forget, you can do it all over. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Van Gaan. Oh, I feel terrible. I don't have anything for anybody. This is all Anna's idea. <laughs> What is it? Hmm? It's hair shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I took all the odds and ends of soap and I mixed them with the last of my toilet water. Oh, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> she gave up toilet water. Yours, Mr. Van Dan, is brilliant. What? Something. What? Something you want more than anything. What? Cigarettes. Oh. Two of Cigarette. them. Pim found some old pipe tobacco in the pocket lining of his coat and we made them. Or rather, Pim did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lighted footage. It's lighted. It's tobacco, really, it is. There's a little fluff in it, but not much. <laughs> it works. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you. <coughs> oh, 
for Mother. Hanukkah greeting. Here's an I.O.U. that I promised to pay. Ten hours of doing whatever you say. Uh, Signed, Oh. <laughs> You would want to sell that, would you, Mrs. Frank? No. <laughs> it's the most precious gift I've ever had. I could use ten hours of silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you meant. Oh, no. I was not supposed to have any pleasure. Oh, what? What? Oh, it's a muffler. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You know, a muffler. Oh. I made it myself out of odds and ends. <sighs> I knitted it in the dark each night after everyone had gone to bed. Oh, I'm afraid it looked better in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, An extraordinary uh, color uh, scheme. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's for Mushi. On behalf of Mushi, I thank you. And uh, uh, this, this is for you. From Mrs. Quack Quack. Well, open it. What is it, Fisa? It's a safety razor. Meep got it for me. It's not new. It's second hand. For what? <laughs> Look, on his upper lip, you can see the beginning of a moustache. He wants to get rid of that. Put a little milk on it and let the cat lick it off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he can't wait. He's going to try it. I got my bushes present. <laughs> and last but never least, my roommate, Mr. Dussel. What? For me? You have something for me? I made them myself. They're earplugs. Earplugs? <laughs> to put in your ears so you won't hear me when I thrash around at night. I made them out of cotton and candle wax. That's a good. See if you can hear me talk. What? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, my God. It's gone inside, huh? Oh, it's gone inside. I, I can't get it out. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Annie. When did she find the time? <laughs> now, this is what I call a real color. Kind of presents and everything. Hi, hi, hi. Good to help. Ah, that's good. And now, Father, let's have the song. Have you heard the Hanukkah song, Mr. Dussel? The song is the whole no, thing. No, no, Anna. Oh. No, Hanukkah, 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 Han
My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that made thee will not slumber. It was a thief. That noise must have scared him away. So come, come. Thank God. Thank God. I think we'd better have some more light, Mark. He took the cash box on the radio. He ran away in such a hurry. He didn't stop to shut the street door. It was swinging wide open. Thanks to this clumsy fool, somebody now knows we're up here. Oh, please, Mr. Dussel, be still. Somebody knows we're up here hiding. Yes, someone knows that we're here. And who is that someone? That someone is a thief. Do you think that a thief is going to go to the green police and say, I was, uh, I was robbing a place the other day, and I heard a noise above my head. Do you think a thief is going to do that? Yes. I think you will. He's right, you know. Father, let's get out of here. We can't stay here now. Let's go. Oh, go where? Go away. Have we lost all faith? All courage? A moment ago, we thought they'd come for us. We were sure it was the end. It wasn't the end. We are safe. We are alive. Amen. 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 We thank thee, O Lord that in thy infinite mercy thou hast again seen fit to spare us. Amen. 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 And now I think we should have the song. Let us have the song. Oh, Hanukkah, 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 Hanukkah the sweet celebration, let all the feast we gather in complete jubilation. Happy yes of seasons, now is here. Many other reasons for good cheer together. We'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. So hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. Hi, hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. Hi, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, the sweet celebration. Around the feast we gather in complete jubilation. Happiest of seasons now is here. Many other reasons for Saturday, the 1st of January, 1944. We've been here now for one year, five months, and 25 days. It seems that our life is at a standstill. We're all a little thinner. Peter is still depressed by Mushi's mysterious disappearance. I keep wishing Peter was a girl instead of a boy. Then I would have someone to talk to. The Van Dan's discussions are as violent as ever. Mother still does not understand me, but then I don't understand her either. There is one great change, however. A change in myself. Speak! Wake up, everyone! Meet's here! I read somewhere that girls of my age don't feel quite certain of themselves, that they become quiet within and begin to think of the miracle that is taking place in their bodies. I think that what is happening to me is so wonderful. What a lovely surprise. We came to bring you New Year's greetings. <laughs> oh, but you shouldn't have. You should have kept at least one day to yourself. <laughs> Don't say that. It's so wonderful to see them. Oh, I can smell the wind and the cold on your clothes. Here, I got something for you. 
Oh, beautiful. How are you, Margaret? Are you feeling any better? I'm We've got right, to pull every kind of pills that she won't cough and make a noise. Hello, Mr. Crown. With my hope for peace in the new year. Look what meat's bought for us. A cake? Oh, yeah. I'll get plates. What? I'll get plates. Oh, meat, you, you shouldn't have. You must have used up weeks of your sugar ration. I get the key, the tea. It's been ages since I even saw a cake. I remember you brought one last New Year's. I remember it well because it was written on it, Peace in 1943. Peace in 1944. Well, it has to come sometime, you know. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Dusky. Here, here, is, here, here is the knife, Misha. Now, how many of us are there? None for me, thank no, you. No, thanks. I couldn't. Uh, very well, that leaves uh, one, seven of us. Eight. Eight. No, I, I left Margaret out. I take it for granted Margaret won't have any. Why won't she? Oh, I don't think it would harm her. Uh, all right. Oh, I just didn't want her to uh, uh, start coughing again. That's all. And uh, please, uh, uh, what, Mrs. What, Frank what, should what? cut the cake. Why? Mrs. Frank divides things better. Then I give everybody exactly the same, don't I? Yes, everybody gets exactly the same, except Mr. Van Damme gets just a little teeny bit more. That is a lie! That she please, always please, cuts please, the same. Please, always. Please, she always please, cuts. Please. You see what a little sugar cake does to us. It goes right to our heads. <coughs> uh, very well. Here you, here you are, Mrs. Mrs. Frank. Looks delicious, me. Delicious. He's lucky to get a girl who can bake like this. The children. Hmm. Peter. Hmm. Mrs. Van Dam. I have to run. Dick's taking me to a party tonight. A party? Oh, how heavenly! Remember now what everyone's wearing and what you have to eat and oh, everything. So you can tell us tomorrow. <laughs> I'll give you a full report. Goodbye, everyone. Hey. Bye. Just a moment. Just a moment. moment. Where are you going? Stay there. Stay. What are you doing? What's wrong? Who's going to sell a coat. Mother's crazy about that old fur coat. It's impossible. It's impossible that anybody could be so silly as to worry about a fur coat at a time like this. That's none of your darn business. If you say one more thing, I'll take you from me. Come. Oh. Come. Oh. Come. Come. A little discussion about the advisability of selling this fur coat. As I have reminded Mrs. Van Damme time and again, it's very really selfish of her to want to keep it when people outside are in such desperate need of clothing. So if you would please sell it for us, it should fetch a good price. And, oh, by the way, get some cigarettes for me. It doesn't matter what kind, just get as many as you can. It's very difficult to get them, Mr. Van Damme, but I'll try. Bye. Bye. Would you bye, please close bye. the door? Bye. Bye. Uh, you know, you can't get near a doctor these days. <laughs> They're so busy. <laughs> After weeks, I finally managed to get one on the telephone. I told him uh, I I'd like an appointment. I wasn't feeling very well. You know what he answers over the telephone? Stick out your tongue. <laughs> Uh, I uh, have some contracts here. Uh, I wonder if you'd look over them with me. Of course. If he could go downstairs. Certainly. Will you forgive us? Uh, I would keep him about a minute. Something has happened, hasn't it, Mr. Croner? No. Something's gone wrong, I know it. If uh, there's something that concerns us here, I think we all should hear it. But the children. What they would imagine would be worse than any reality, Mr. Carla. It's a man in the storeroom. Uh, I don't know whether or not you remember him. Carl, about 50, oh. heavy set, nearsighted. He came with us just before you left. Uh, he was from Utrecht. That's the man. A couple of weeks ago, when I was in the storeroom, 
He closed the door and asked me, How's Mr. Frank? What do you hear from Mr. Frank? I told him I only knew there was a rumor that you were in Switzerland. He said he'd heard that rumor too. But he thought I might know something more. I didn't pay any attention to it. But then... A thing happened yesterday. He had brought some invoices to the office for me to sign. Uh, as I was going through them, I looked up. He was standing, staring at the bookcase. The bookcase that hides your door. He said he thought he remembered a door there. Wasn't there a door there? I used to go up to the loft. Then he told me he wanted more money. 20 guilders more a week. Blackmail. 20 guilders. Very modest blackmail. Well, that's just the beginning. You yeah, know what I think? I think it was the thief who was here that night. That's how he knows we're here. What shall I do? Pay him the money? Take a chance on firing him? No, 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 no. no. Oh, for God's sake, don't fire him. Uh, uh, pay him what he asks and keep him here so you can have your eye on him. Offer him half, and then we'll soon find out if it's blackmail or not. I'll offer him half then. And goodbye. We'll hope for the best. You can thank your son for this. <laughs> Smashing the light. I'll tell you. It's only a matter of time now. I wish the end would come, whatever it is. Ma! Then at least we would know where we were. Well, aren't you ashamed of yourself talking like that? Now think how lucky we are. Think of the thousands dying every day in the war. Think of the people in concentration camps. What's the good of that? What's the good of thinking of misery when you're already miserable? That's stupid, Mother! Now, I'm... We're young, Margaret and Peter and I! You brought us and had your chance! If we start thinking of all the horror in the world, we're lost! We're trying to hold on to some kind of ideals when everything ideals hopes everything are being destroyed! Now, Anna, dear... It isn't our fault the world is in such a mess! We weren't around when all this started! Anna! So don't try to take it out on us! Looks as if we started the war. Did we start the war? She forgot her cake. Forgot this. I thought you were fine just now. You, you know just how to talk to them. You know just how to say it. I'm no good. I, I never can think, especially when I'm mad. When he said that about Mother, all I could think is I just wanted to hate him. I just wanted to give him such a... But an old man like that, it wouldn't be so good. You're making a big mistake about me. I do it all wrong. I go too far. I say too much. I hurt people's feelings. I think you're just fine. What, what I want to say is that, well, if it wasn't for you around here, I don't know. What I mean is... Do you mean it, Peter? Do you really mean it? Well, I said it, didn't I? Thank you, Peter. You're lucky having a room to go to. I hardly ever get a minute alone. 
When they start in on me, I can't duck away. I have to stand there and take it. Well, I think you gave some of it back just now. <laughs> I get so mad. They formed their opinions about everything. But we were still trying to find out. We have problems here that no other people our age ever had. And just as you think you've solved them, something comes along and bang, you have to start all over again. Well, at least you've got someone you, you can talk to. Not really. Mother, I never discuss anything serious with her. She doesn't understand. Father's all right. We can talk about everything. Everything but one thing, Mother. I think your father's just fine. Oh, he is? Oh, yes, he is. He's the only one who's ever given me the feeling I have any sense. But anyway, nothing can take the place of school and friends your own age. Or near your age. Can it? I suppose you miss your friends and all. Oh, it didn't, it didn't just... Isn't it funny, you and I? You've been seeing each other every minute for almost a year and a half. And this is the first time we've ever really talked. It helps a lot to have someone to talk to, don't you think? It helps you let off steam. Well, any time you want to let off steam, you can come to my room. I can get up an awful lot of steam. <laughs> you have to be careful how you say that. It's all right with me. Do you mean it? Well, I said it, didn't I? Wednesday, the 8th of February, 1944. We've had bad news. The people from whom we've got our ration books have been arrested. So we've had to cut down on our food. Our stomachs are so empty that they rumble and make strange noises all in different keys. Monday, the 6th of March, 1944. Mr. Crowler is in the hospital. It seems he has ulcers. Pim says we are his ulcers. <laughs> I feel that spring is coming. I feel it in my whole body and soul. May I come in? Margaret, hmm? tell me, am I terribly ugly? Oh, stop fishing, will you? No, no, tell me. Of course you're not. You've got nice eyes. You've got a lot of animation, and, uh... I feel utterly confused. I am longing, so longing for everything. For friends. For someone to talk to. Someone who understands. Someone young who feels as I do. The only one I worry about is you. I have a feeling that every time I go into Peter's room, I may be hurting you. I know if it were me, I'd be desperately jealous. Of course I'm jealous. Jealous that you have something to get up in the morning for. But jealous of you and Peter, no. <laughs> Maybe there's nothing to be jealous of. Maybe he doesn't really like me. Maybe I'm just taking the place of his cat. <laughs> Will you please let me into my room? Just a minute, dear, dear Mr. Dussel. Well, here I go to run the gauntlet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, in my days, it was the boys that were calling on the girls. Well, you know how young people like to have secrets. Uh, Peter's room is the only place where they can talk. Look at uh... Peter, no one just staying up all hours of the night. Do you hear that? Anna, promptly at nine in bed. Aren't they awful? Don't let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. Oh, I forgot I was going to bring you some more pictures. Oh, these are fine, thanks. Don't you want some more? You've just got me some new ones. Well, maybe later. <laughs> I remember when I got that. I won it. <laughs> I bet Yopi that I could eat five ice cream cones. Uh, we'd all been playing ping pong. 
We used to have heavenly times. We'd finish up with ice cream at the Delphi or the Oasis where the Jews were allowed. There'd always be lots of boys and we'd laugh and joke. I'd like to go back to it for a few days or a week. But after that, I know I'd be bored to death. I think more seriously about life now. I want to be a journalist or something. I love to write. What do you want to do? Well, I, I thought I might like to go off somewhere. Work on a farm or something. Some job that doesn't take much brains. You shouldn't talk that way. You've got the most awful inferiority complex. Oh, I, I know I'm not smart. That's not true. You're much better than I am. In d millions of things. Arithmetic and algebra. And... Well, you're a million times better than I am in algebra. You like Margaret, don't you? Right from the start, you liked her. A lot better than you liked me. I don't know. Oh, it's all right. Everyone feels that way. Margaret's so good. She's sweet and bright and beautiful, and I'm not. I wouldn't say that. Oh, no. I know I'm not. I know perfectly well I'm not a beauty. I never have been, and I never shall be. Now, I don't agree with that at all. I think you're pretty. That's not true. And another thing. You've changed. From at first, I mean. I have? Well, I used to think you were awful noisy. How have I changed? Well, you're... Uh, you're quieter? <laughs> I'm glad that you don't just hate me. Oh, I never said that. I bet when you get out of here, you're never going to think of me again. When you get back with all your friends, you're going to say, now, whatever did I see in that Mrs. Quack Quack? I don't have any friends. Oh, Peter, of course you have. Everyone has friends. No, not me. I don't want any. I can get along all right without them. Does that mean you can get along all right without me? I think of myself as your friend. Oh, no. If they're all like you, it'd be different. Did you ever kiss a girl? Oh, yes. Once. That picture's crooked. <clears throat> was she pretty? I don't know. I was blindfolded. It was at a party, one of those kissing games. Oh! Oh, well, I don't suppose that really counts. Oh, it didn't with me. I've been kissed twice. Once, a man I'd never seen before kissed me on the cheek when he picked me off the ice and I was crying. And the second was Mr. Kopweiss, a friend of my father's who kissed my hand. I wouldn't say those really counted, would you? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I know almost for certain that Margaret would never kiss anyone unless she was engaged to them. And I'm sure that Mother never touched a man before Penny. But I don't know. Things are so different now. What do you think? Do you think a girl shouldn't kiss anyone except if she's engaged to them or something? It's so hard to try to think what to do. When here we are, with the whole world falling around our ears. And you think, well, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And what do you think? Well, <clears throat> I think it depends on the girl, because with some girls, whatever they do is wrong. But then with others, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong. Uh, I, I've always thought... Nine o'clock. I have to go. That's right. 
Nej. You won't let them stop you from coming? No. Sometime I might bring my diary. There's so many things in it I want to talk over with you. There's a lot about you. What kind of things? Oh, I wouldn't want you to see some of it. I thought you were a nothing, just the way you thought about me. Did you change your mind about me the way I changed mine about you? Well, you'll see. What's Someone that? is stealing the food! Uh, you, you. Uh, give me that. Uh, 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 you, 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 stealing the food. You, 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 it was you, and all the time we thought it was the rats. What is it? Put him, what is it? The bread. He was stealing the bread. Mr. Van Dyke, how could you? I am hungry. Well, all of us hungry. I see the children getting thinner and thinner every day. Your own son, Peter, I hear him moan in his sleep. Well, he's used to more than the rest of us. He needs for he's a big man. And you. You're worse than he is. Don't think I haven't seen you always saving the choicest bits for him. I've watched you day after day and I've held my tongue, but not any longer. Not after this. Now I want him to go. I want him to get out of here. Hit it. I want him to take his things and get out. You are speaking in anger. You cannot mean what you are saying. I mean exactly that. Two years we have lived here side by side. We have respected each other's rights. We have managed to live in peace. Are we now going to throw it all away? I know this will never happen again, Mr. Van Dunk, will it? No, no. Mm -mm. He steals once, he'll steal again. Uh, we will all go to our rooms and afterwards we'll sit down and talk this out quietly. No, 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 no. no more talk. I want them to leave. I want them to get out. There are the hiding places. I'll give you money out of my own pocket. I'll give it gladly. I've never seen you like this before. I should have spoke up long ago. You can't be nice to some people. If it hadn't been for you, it would have been enough for all of us. Stop it! We don't need the Nazis to destroy us. We are destroying ourselves. Here? Give this to me. She'll find you another hiding place. Here, take it. Take it. Peter, mother, you're not, you're not. Peter hasn't done anything. No, no, not of course not. Peter, Peter's one of the children. He'll stay, of course. If father goes, then I must go too. No, no Peter. No, Peter. Oh, mother. I don't care about the food. I don't want it. They can have mine. Only don't send them away. It'll be daylight soon. They'll be caught. Please, mother, please, please. They're not going now. <laughs> they stay until me finds them another hiding place. We divide what we have. 
an equal share for each. But one thing I insist on, he must never come to this room again where the food is stored. You can cook it and take it up to him. We haven't thought this far that we are going to fight over a handful of rotten potatoes. It's me. At this hour, there must be trouble. Mrs. I beg you, don't let us hear a thing like this, please. You see? 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 Friday, the 4th of August, 1944. The invasion seems temporarily to be bogged down. Mr. Crawler has to have an operation, which looks bad. The Gestapo has found the radio that was stolen. Mr. Dussel says they'll trace it back and back to the thief, and then it's just a matter of time till they get to us. Another birthday has gone by, so now I am 15. Already I know what I want. I have a goal. That's the third time, Mr. Frank. That's the third time in quick succession. It's me trying to get us. Please, please. 
For three days now, Meep hasn't been to see us. And today nobody has come to work. There hasn't been a sound in the building. Perhaps it's Sunday. Maybe we've lost track of the day. It's Friday. It's Friday, the 4th of August. Friday and not a man at work. You don't have to speak. Just pick it up and listen. See if it's me. No, I've told you no. I'll do nothing that might let anyone know we are in the building. I'm going down. Just wait here until we die. I can't stand it any longer. I'm going to kill myself. I'm just going to kill myself. Oh, for God's sake, stop it. I would think that you would want me to die. I would think that you would want me to do it. Well, whose fault is it we're here? We could have been safe somewhere in, in America or in Switzerland. But no, no, you wouldn't leave when I wanted to. You couldn't leave your things. You, you could, couldn't leave your precious furniture. Don't touch me! Oh. Look at the sky, Peter. Isn't it a lovely day? Aren't the clouds beautiful? You know what I do when it seems I couldn't stand being cooped up in here one more minute? I think myself out. I think myself on a walk in the park where I used to go with Pim where the daffodils and the crocus and the violets grow down the slopes. You know the most wonderful thing about thinking yourself out? You can have it any way you like. You can have roses and violets and chrysanthemums all blooming at the same time. It's funny, I used to take it all for granted. I think if something doesn't happen pretty soon, if we don't get out of here, I can't stand much more of this. I wish you had a religion, Peter. No, thanks. Not me. Oh, I don't mean you have to be orthodox. Just to believe in something. When I think of the dearness of you, Peter, when I think of the goodness of the people we know. Me, Mr. Kralla, Dirk, the vegetable man. All risking their lives for us every day. When I think of these good things, I'm not afraid anymore. When I think I get mad. Look at us. Hiding out here for two years. Not able to move, caught here like... Just waiting for them to come and get us. And all for what? We're not the only people that have had to suffer. There have always been people that have had to. Sometimes one race and sometimes another, and yet the world still goes on. That doesn't make me feel any better. I know it's terrible trying to have faith when people are doing such horrible things. But you know what I sometimes think? I think the world may be going through a phase. The way I was with Mother. It'll pass. Maybe not for hundreds of years, but someday. 
I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are really good at heart. I want to see it now, not a thousand years from now. But, Peter, if you'd only look at it as part of a great pattern, if we're just a little minute in life, Look. Look at the sky now. Isn't it lovely? Some day, when we're outside again, I'm going to... Last two years we have lived in fear. Now we can live in hope. often been downcast myself, but never in despair. I can shake off everything when I write. But, and that is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living even after my death. I'd gone to the country to find food. When I came back, the house was surrounded by police. We made it our business to learn how they knew. It was the thief. The thief who told them. It seems strange to say this. That anyone could be happy in a concentration camp. But Anna was happy in the camp in Holland, where they first took us. 
after two years of being shut up in these rooms, she could be out, out in the sunshine and the fresh air that she loved. And the news of the war were good. The British and the Americans were sweeping through France. Uh, we felt sure that they'd get to us in time. But then, in September, we were told that we were to be shipped to Poland. The men to one camp and the women to another. I was sent to Auschwitz. They went to Belzen. In January, we were freed. The few of us who were left. And the war wasn't over yet, so it took us a long time to get home. We were sent here and there behind the lines where we'd be safe. And every time our train stopped at a siding or a crossing, we'd all get out and go from group to group. Where were you? Were you at Belsen, at Buchenwald, at Mauthausen? Is it possible that you knew my wife? Did you ever see my husband, my son, my daughter? That's how I have found out about my wife's death. And Margot. And the Vandans, Peter, Dussel. But Anna, I still did hope. Yesterday I went to Rotterdam. I'd heard about a woman there. She'd been in Belgium with Anna. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. She puts me to shame. 